Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Ashira binti Abbas and today I will explain about the crimes against humanity. First of all, I want to thank to uh, Mr. Shafiq Sulaiman for giving me for giving me a time to complete this task. Okay, so first, okay, so first. Um, for the introduction, uh, what is what are the crimes against humanity? Crimes against humanity uh, refer to the specific crimes that committed in the context of a large scale attack that are targeting all of the civilians, regardless of their nationality. Uh, uh, these crimes also uh, include murder, torture, sexual violence, uh, enslavement, persecution, uh, and forced disappearance, and etc. Uh, the crimes against humanity have often been committed as part of state policies, but they can also be perpetrated by non-state armed groups. Uh, or also para, para, paramilitary forces. Uh, unlike war crimes, uh, crimes against humanity can also be committed in uh, peacetime and contrary to genocide, they are not necessarily committed against a specific uh, national, ethnic, racial or religious group. So what are the elements uh, of Crimes against humanity. Uh, a crimes against humanity is committed when uh, the accused first the accused co commits a prohibited act. Uh, second, uh, that is part of first an attack. Second, uh, which is widespread or systematic, and the third is uh, directed against any civilian population. And that is, uh, and when there is a link or nexus between the acts of the accused and the attack. Uh, the contextual elements uh, determines that crimes against humanity involve uh, either large, either large, Ideal scale violence in relation uh, to the number of victims or its extension over a broad geographic area or it can be called as a widespread or uh, a methodical type of violence uh, like a systematic. Uh, this excludes random, accidental or isolated acts of violence. In addition, based on Article 7, Clause 2A of the Rome Statute, that means that uh, crimes against humanity uh, must be committed in furtherance of a state or organizational policy to commit an attack. Uh, the plan or policy does not need to be explicitly stipulated or formally adopted and can, therefore, be inferred from the totality of the circumstances. Uh, in contrast with genocide, uh, crimes against humanity. Uh, in contrast with genocide, crimes against humanity do not need to target a specific group. Instead, the victim of the attack can be any civilian population, regardless of its affiliation or identity. Another important distinction is that in the case of crimes against humanity, it is not necessary to prove that there is an overall specific intent. Uh, it's, uh, it suffice for proof that there is an overall specific, specific intent. It suffices for there to be simple intent to commit any acts that can be listed, with the exception of the act of persecution, which requires additional discriminatory intent. The perpetrator must also act with knowledge of the attack against the civilian population and that his or her action is part of the attack. So, um, Let's move to the crimes against humanity uh, under the international law. 
uh, crimes against humanity uh, has been evolved under under international customary law and through the jurisdictions uh, of international court such as the International Criminal Court, the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, and the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. Many states have also criminalized crimes against humanity in their domestic law, and also others have yet to do so. Crimes against humanity have not yet been codified in a dedicated treaty of international law, unlike genocide and war crimes, although there are efforts to do so. Despite this, uh, the prohibition of uh, crimes against this humanity, similar to the prohibition of genocide, has been considered a primary norm of international law from which no derogation is permitted in which is applicable to all states. The 1998 Rome Statute establishing the International Criminal Court document that reflects the latest consensus among the international community in this matter. It is also the treaty that offers the most extensive list of specific acts that may constitute the crime. Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, unlike other human rights violations, war crimes do not engage state responsibility but individual crime responsibility. This means that individual can be tried and found personally responsible for these crimes. Prohibited acts include murder, extermination, enslavement, deportation, or forcible transfer of population, imprisonment, torture, sexual violence, persecution against an identifiable mm. group, and forced disappearance of person. The crime of appetite and other inhuman acts of a similar character intentionally causing great suffering or serious injury to body or to mental or physical health based on Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, Article 7. So, next we, we look the crimes against humanity versus genocide. There are two important differences uh, between genocide and crimes against humanity. First, uh, we can see that the crime of genocide has a treaty of its own, while the definition of crimes against humanity uh, appears in various international instruments that do not deal uh, exclusively the, with the crimes against humanity. Second, uh, genocide, unlike a crimes against humanity is a crime with a double mental element. Uh, a general intent to commit the act, and a special intent to eliminate a group in whole or in acts, and a special intent to eliminate a group in a whole or in part. Crimes against humanity, however, do not require the targeting of a specific group. They only require the regular Criminal mens rea, which is acknowledgement of the factual element of the crime and or intent to commit the crime, regardless of the crime and or intent, regardless of who the victims are and what is their group identity. Yet, in terms of factual elements of the crime or actus reus, crimes against humanity posit a special factual condition that the crimes were part of uh, a widespread or systematic attack directed against any civilian population. Such a condition is uh, required for the commission of the crime of genocide. For all the reasons above, the crime of genocide uh, is usually much harder to prove than crimes against humanity. Uh, it is because of a uh, genocide requires uh, some proof or uh, specific discriminatory intent while crimes against humanity 
just require a proof of uh, general intent to attack civilian populations. For this reason, the uh, International Court of Justice could not determine Serbia. Okay, so uh, based on this, we can see, uh, for example, for this reason, the International Court of Justice could not determine Serbia's responsibilities for genocide in the Bosnia-Herzegovina versus Serbia and Montenegro case. It only determines Serbia's failure to prevent the commission of the genocide by the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. So in the conclusion, uh, the International Criminal Court is an international court that prosecutes individual per perpetrators of international crimes, war crimes, such as war crimes, crimes against humanity, genocide, and aggression. The court was uh, established uh, with the goal to bring in a man and then to impunity for the perpetrators of the crimes and thus to contribute to the prevention of grave crimes that threaten the peace, security, and well-being of the world. That's all from me. Thank you.